Get out the insurance cards, get out the co-pays. The office is open, my friends. Brought to you by DrRoto.com. Hello, my fellow breadheads, and welcome to One and Done, your fast break for college basketball information powered by DrRoto.com. I am your host, Napesy Hustle. You can find me on X at The Real Napier. I will give you a follow back if you follow me. The offseason is officially upon us, gentlemen, and we have hit the ground running with our transfer big board. Tons of content coming here to make sense of all the transfers, all the coaching carousels, all everything. Our two titans of college basketball. First, he is our captain of the Green Screens Media Ship. You can find him on X at MC Holland 34. That's right, Mike Holland. How you doing, brother? What up? What up, man? It feels like uh, feels like we've had a little bit of a break, man. What have you guys been doing? You guys been napping or what's it the feels deal here? Feels like the very first time. Feels like I haven't seen you guys on the screen in, in quite some time after seeing y'all pretty much every day through March. I'm so staring at the uh, sun over the weekend. That's what it was. <laughs> resting up, recharging the batteries. I, I'm doing good, man. I've uh, been dabbling in a little NBA prize picks. Uh, you know, been making some some coin there and uh, quickly burning it over the last couple of days. So that's been a lot of fun. Uh, but yeah, uh, a lot of news. It's just it's just ridiculous. This this portal window, thirty days. At some point, that thirty days will end. I don't even know what day we're in because <laughs> that's how fast this thing is going. But a lot of news that we're going to get to, and, and happy to talk about it. Yeah, absolutely. Tons of news, and we got the right guys to do it. And one of those right guys is, of course, the conductor of the green screens media train he does a train mike does the ship you can find him on x at dr william cannon mr j heinrich how we doing jay what it do baby how about it we finished it up it was we just had our wrestlemania of college basketball wrestlemania just happened we just had wrestlemania and we had the wrestlemania of college basketball as well of course with the two teams that everybody thought should end up playing for it at the end of the season. And of course, against all odds, that's exactly what happened. We hardly ever get that. (laughs) The two teams that we think will be there, but it happened. And of course, UConn, the heavy favorites pulled it out. What a time to be alive right now with the transfer portal, the coaching carousel, it is all going down. And of course we're here to break it down for everybody. So happy to be here tonight. Mr. Napesy hustle. What do we got happening? Yeah, man. uh, Great things going on. We got the uh, fleet command here today with the captain and conductor. Make sure you go out there, like, and subscribe. Keep up to date with all this off-season craziness. We are on top of it. We have the transfer portal season going, interviews, and tons of content plan coming. Hit that notification bell to know when you are coming in, when we are coming in with this hot info, I should say. Uh, but before we get into these headlines, I definitely want to shout out Jeff Gagner for scooping up that love jersey hey. for winning our inaugural uh, t- uh, tournament uh, pick them here, man. So Congrats, good job, Jeff. Jeff. I know we, yeah, we went back and forth on the uh, on the old Twitter universe. But, uh, <laughs> you got the old Napsey Hub salute on Twitter, the big face yeah. Yeah. reply, yeah. big stick. Yeah, That's you got awesome. my giant face there. I, I didn't, I didn't think the the tweet was going to be that big, but you got it. <laughs> and uh, and good job getting that love jersey. What about Jeff? Make sure you're still with us out there, uh, uh, Jeff, and uh, everybody else out there. We'll, we'll definitely do it again next year. Uh, but, yeah, let's jump into these headlines, guys. You know, not going to bury the lead. UConn wins the national championship convincingly, right? Beating Purdue 75 to 60. They become the first program to win back-to-back titles since 07. Big stuff. They broke the record for point differential. Fellas, how are they able to make it look so easy? <laughs> Listen, Jay, let's closest, start with you, man. Closest margin of victory was 14. Average margin of victory, 23.3. First team to go back to back since Florida in 06, 07. That's right, back to back. And for those not paying attention, this was UConn's sixth title in the last 26 years when Dan Hurley. Mike said that UConn has been running college basketball for the last 26 years. That was not a joke. 
<laughs> like people, oh, he's oh, oh, UConn. No, like six titles in 26 years and going back to back right now. How hard is it to go back to back in college basketball right now? Hey, man, you it's a uh, super. Yeah, yeah. Like, how is that? Like, what would the what would the odds be if two years ago, <laughs> let's say back to back, you would have gotten like. Five hundred to one, basically, yeah. <laughs> or even, even crazier, right? But no, just a just an awesome job by by Coach Early. Um, for me, like, there's just so many weapons, and, and that's kind of what happened. Like, you watch the game; like, he did his thing in the first half. He kind of wore down a little bit because he had to get the load. You know, much of the reason why Purdue was in the national championship game had to do with the guard play around him. Like everyone says, ed, 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 and yes. But really, ED only accounts for, you know, I say only, 26 points. He got scored more than 26, you know, 28, 30 points to win a basketball game. And what happened? The guards, you know, Braden Smith, Lawyer, Jones didn't do much. Like, it just it didn't happen. They didn't shoot any threes. They're the number Mike, team at three point. That's what I was going to say, man. What are we doing? For seven? Only shot seven threes? What was that about? <laughs> And they only made one. Like you're not, yeah. you're not going to beat like, UConn not, hitting do you one go, three. What do you go away from that? How do, how do you go away from that in like the most important game of the season? And you go away from the formula that sort of helped get you there. Yeah, you're, you're right, Mike. Edie got his in the first half, but overall, UConn out rebounded Purdue. Yeah, by five. Yeah, thirteen offensive rebounds for UConn, Mike. Like this is, right. uh, you can look at the stat. You can't always like look at a box score and have it tell the whole story of the game. But this one does. This one, you can read this like a book, Mike, and it yeah. tells you exactly what happened. Well, it tells you the game plan, right? So number two three-point shooting team in the country, they only take seven threes. Well, you know what? They, they, nobody was doubling. They didn't double Zach Eady till the second half. They basically said, we're not going to double you. Klingon, just, if he gets an easy one, just let him get an easy one. Now, Samson Johnson was, like, trying to block everything. I don't know what he was trying to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he fouled out pretty quickly. But they said, we're not going to double. And when you don't double Edie, you don't get wide open three-pointers that they had the entire year because there is only one or two, maybe three guys in the entire country that can maybe, you know, keep him from just absolutely destroying you inside. And even Klingon was getting – I mean, he was getting work there for, uh, you know, the first half. I mean, you know, he did as good as he could. Now he forced Edie into some 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 longer shots than he would normally take. But yeah, yeah. I mean, that's the thing. You're you're only gonna they basically said we're gonna stay on the shooters. Edie's gonna have to score 50 to to really beat us. And that wasn't gonna happen because his conditioning and his I mean, yeah, it's been great this year. 40 and 39 minutes. We said that in the two games leading up. Yeah. But man, like he got tired when it was uh you know time for him to just carry the load every single possession so he did a hell of a try he tried it he gave it a hell of a run i should say kind of like caitlin clark like Like, yes it's very similar that's a great comparison team versus a player that's a parallel that's a parallel path right there for zach Eady and caitlin clark the way that they just put their teams on their shoulders and then you get to the national championship game and you play against a team the best team team of shooters in the country (laughs) And that Iowa, that Iowa women's game, no, don't take anything away from them. Like they, that was that was that more people watched that women's championship game than the men's final. Yeah, yeah I was, was going to say the same thing. Like, that was that was pretty crazy. Yeah, which is which is amazing, and and it's uh, on its own. But Mike, that's what a great comparison there. Well, you got to think like the like you got to think the the comparisons to South Carolina women and and UConn men. They have the big. They have the big person in the middle, right? That can can dominate, right? And then so they what's have to shoot. So damn good. What's the, yeah, what's their uh, I don't know. We're playing a lot of WNBA uh, DFS this season. <laughs> She'll be in the top three in the draft. Oh, dang man, just watching her play. I I, I, t- I sent you the meme in the group chat, like the Shaq. I'm sorry, I was I wasn't familiar with your game because I wasn't. Yeah. I was. So, she's grace. She's like a yeah, gazelle. Camilla Cardoza. Cardoza, like I mean, just an. Oh, not overpowering either. She doesn't no. have to be. She's graceful. What a game. What a anyway. Sorry, I just I, yeah. I, I wanted to make sure like we talked we were going to talk about her like she yeah, was fun give, to watch. Gotta give the women their flowers too, you know. Absolutely. Game is grown. Well deserved. Well deserved. I, yeah, but I, my you really like flowers, so. Uh. Well, and again, <laughs> you can't you can't let a team get thirteen offensive rebounds and then only turn them over six times. UConn only had yeah. six turnovers in that game. Yeah. You can't game. give them extra possessions and. 
and never they got 62 shots off like <laughs> yeah. i mean it's you can't you, you're not gonna win any games like that. such a well-coached team the game plan was perfect hurley Nate. is just like it's like body blows, man. Like it's body blows yeah. for Nate. Like it's yeah. just like body blows from UConn in the first half. It might only be an eight to ten, you know, eight to ten point game. You think you're in it, and those body blows really show themselves in the second half against this team. Not only this year, but last year too. It's the same. It's the same formula. Just a, I mean, somewhat of a different cast, obviously. Yeah, you just wear wear the big guy down, and and you know they only have that. Well, they have great players around him, but he's the main piece. Yeah, wear him down, the head off the make, make everybody else do. Yeah, make everybody else yeah. do their job. Yeah, man, it was a great game. I, I loved watching it, and and uh, it was great cap off for this entire season. Uh, but now that the season's over, we got the coaching carousel going on. I mean, I think the biggest news here is uh, John Calipari uh, making headlines with his move to Arkansas. I mean, he was at Kentucky for 15 years. I mean, first, I mean, were you all shocked when you heard the news? And what do you think he's really capable of over there in, in Fayetteville? Yeah, I'll, I'll start, Jay. Um, this is, uh, I think it's a, a good thing for both right, sides. Kentucky, those fans, they they want to play for national titles every single year, and rightfully so. It's a, the number one job uh, in college basketball, I would say. Uh, what Calipari did early was really great. And I talked about this the other day, right? The young guys, it just doesn't work right now because you have so many older players and the transfer portal allows teams to stay old. So like you look at UConn, you lose some guys, but then you go out and you get a Cam Spencer. And now all of a sudden you're not young, you're still old. So you can always kind of stay old in this era of college basketball. There's not this cycle where you develop your friend or you, you have your freshman they're playing, you know, junior seniors, they graduate, right? It's like a constant flow of just getting guys into your program to face these freshmen. And, and, and sometimes maybe just too much talent, right? Is <laughs> is a visage, not really playing any minutes. That guy looks like he would be, you know, starting center on 300 and, <laughs> 360 teams in the country. I mean, the number the top five picks in the draft aren't even starting. So – yeah, I mean, I think it's I think it's just best for both parties. Uh, move to Arkansas, though, man. Like, what a <laughs> big money donors down there in Arkansas, Jay. What are your thoughts? Think Calipari is gonna to bring a bunch of talent with them to Arkansas and, and get it done down there? Yeah, was I shocked? No, I don't. Nothing shocks me in college basketball anymore. Like, there's nothing that you would really tell me unless you know, like something crazy, like Chris Beard was coming back to Texas. Like, that would be surprising. But something like this, where where Cal is just making a move, like you said, to, to, to bring it back to Texas again. It reminds me of when Shaka Smart and Texas sort of like, you know, mutual separation. Yeah, it's kind of the they, same thing, right? called it like, yeah, yeah, it's very similar to that to where you get the Shaka. Okay, like <laughs> we, it, it, it's, it's, out of, it's running out of steam here in Texas. You're not going to – you're obviously not the guy, but we like you and you're a really nice right. guy, so why don't you talk to somebody else? Yes. Yeah. You know, it's okay. No it's buyout okay. because it's they're it's just okay. like, okay, go You're ahead. Good. <laughs> You're good. Um, but, yeah, like, honestly, we know what we get with Cal, at least recently. It's NBA talent on the floor. And then you sprinkle in, you know, sprinkle in, you know, a deep run here and there. Although he hasn't been even sniffed the Elite Eight since 2019. That's the problem. I mean, that's why we're having this conversation to begin <laughs> with. Yeah. But you know that he's going to make one more run at it, a fresh start, and adjust to this new era of how you have to construct a roster. It might not happen in year one. He's a good enough coach to make it happen in year one. But I think, Mike, for him to strike that balance at Arkansas, where, yeah, the expectations are not what they are at Kentucky's, but they're high, especially with this hire. So, I mean – you're going to get the same thing. We're going to get Kentucky of the Southwest here really is of middle America is what we're going to get in Fayetteville. And, uh, you know, good for Arkansas. Like it's, it's a great, like $5 million in NIL <laughs> like every year. Yeah. 
That's what you get with that. Uh, what is that? That Tyson chicken and those Walmart down chicken. there. And... Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Mr. Walton, whichever one of those Waltons is so alive. Running there was Walmart. a video of them getting like a uh, standing ovation at the, <laughs> at the stadium or whatever. Uh, I think it was last night. So the Tyson chicken fun. guy. Yeah, it was either him or I, I can't remember which one it was. Really? But it was either... I, you, I, I was just making a joke. Really? That no, guy I, think it's a Wal- I think it's a Walmart family that, I, you know. The Waltons. Yeah, they were Waltons. literally giving them like a standing ovation. It's like that's where we are in college athletics. It's like where the yeah. big money donors are uh, are uh, absolutely uh, <laughs> running the show right now. Oh, 100 percent, man. And and, it, and it's pretty crazy. I think one of the funniest things about this this move too uh, was uh, his presser coming in when he said, "Yeah, so I've met the team," and he's like, "There is no team, right?" It kind of kind of talks about you know. Go going with the transfer portal, and he's you know, basically gonna try and rebuild this team here because you know that's what everybody's doing. Um, well, good good stuff, guys. Well, wanted to jump into these comments. We got we got some commenters coming in here. Yeah, who we got? I'm loving it. We got snake size coming in. I hope my Indiana Hoosiers are getting some five star hired guns in the portal. Please, <laughs> us. We'll, yeah, we'll do well, what we can. We'll we'll. Uh, we'll We'll uh, see what we can do there. for you there, buddy. Yeah. And then we got our guy, Jeff Gagner, coming in. Salute. He's got five stars in Gagner House. Good stuff, Chris. Thank you, sir. Appreciate it. <laughs> Man, hey, put, that on the, put that on a T-shirt, Jeff. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> Maybe a little patch for your Caleb Love jersey, dude. <laughs> when, we, when we launched, the, when we launched the, the Green Screens Media, whatever, one and done website, uh, and you look for the merch, like that is going to be a shirt in our store. That salute right there. I, I guarantee you. And it will be our it will be a top seller. It will easily be a top seller. No doubt. Merch, merch mover right there. Good to see you, Jeff, in the comments. Thank you, man. Appreciate it. Yeah, you. absolutely, Good guys. Job. Keep Congrats. it coming. Make sure you That's like and subscribe. Too. Tell your friends about us, uh, all your college basketball hoop heads that are out there with you. Let them know that this content's out there and we're ready to keep this going. But speaking of keeping things going, let's go ahead and move on to the next headline we got here. Um, so Calipari out, that opens up Kentucky, one of the biggest jobs in the country, right? Um, and we're getting breaking news that BYU's Mark Pope is getting the job, a familiar face for the one and done crew. Friend of the show. <laughs> yeah, a lot of wrap our heads around here. Uh, Mike, I'm going to start with you on this. Well, uh, we were having this conversation, Jay, what about – Three hours ago, yeah. so came to fruition. If you had some money, uh, could have gotten what nine to one <laughs> uh, that Mark Pope was going to become the head coach of Kentucky. I mean, look, like you tried, right? You tried and unsuccessfully you didn't you get the big names that were out there. Um, I don't know, man. This one, this one, I love Coach Poe. Appreciate him giving an interview. Um, I think obviously he knows what the job means. Obviously, played in the program, won a national title there. Uh, came into BYU, um, you know, obviously two years ago, finished sixth in WCC, but then last year, like nobody thought they were going to do anything in the Big 12. Obviously, the ending is not what you would like to see. And I don't know if Kentucky fans are going to want to see that type of ending toward, to their seasons because that's what yeah, they've been experiencing they'd be, lately. They'd be used to it, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but he plays a very fun style. It's up and down, shoot a lot of threes. Uh, just in talking to the guy, I think he's going to be a hell of a recruiter. Um, oh, yeah. I mean, he's a seven-footer. He's imposing. Like, he just – I mean – He's got it all, man. Like the, the charm. I mean, the interview, Jay, that we had with him, like, it, I'm not surprised that he has this type of job, man. Um, it was the favorite. It was my that? favorite interview that we did. Like, he was, he's, he's been my favorite interview. Like, uh, Randy Bennett, Coach Bennett was great. Like, I'll tell Coach Alford that too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. But I really, I really like talking to, to Coach Pope. Um, and you do get the sense that, he will be able to get the players to Kentucky that he'll need to get to be successful. I like the style. I think Kentucky's going to, I think they're going to like the up and down and they'll get the athletes there. They'll have the horses. They'll have the Jimmies and the Joes to, to get it done. So. Does it make you nervous at all with some of these yes. like former players, Juwan Howard, you know, Hubert Davis, you know, uh, you know, <laughs> riding the up yeah. and down the wave there. Uh that was my prime like example of why maybe and then obviously he, he righted that ship and I was really hard on him. And, you know, yeah, shout out to for sure to Coach Davis, but I think he would 
agree that that's not he did not meet it's like added pressure yeah. it is added pressure but he, i think maybe you take that job knowing right like yeah i guess there's not too much this pressure. Is it. I, I he was in that melting pot like this is the thing like for a job like this you either want a coach that has big time experience and obviously pope with power five like wcc has been a power conference in basketball for, at least at the top for a little bit with that talent yeah. Um, but um, then having a really nice year in the Big 12, Pope has shown that he can win at a high level in big-time conferences. So you really like that for, if you're a Kentucky fan. But you also, again, he's won there. He has the winning Kentucky – he bleeds blue. Like, like you, and he's won there. That's He's a proven winner as a player, obviously. But as a coach, like, that's the kind of guy, if you're bringing it back, that I, you feel like you can get behind – as an alumni or rich donor or whatever it is, that's because that's, we were talking <laughs> about that, you know, obviously like this is where we are. Like we're, we're, we're giving the round of applause for the donors when they walk in and uh, he'll be able to talk to the donors. He'll be able to talk to the players. He'll be able to talk to mama and dad and those parents, which even though the money matters, you know, obviously a lot, those parents, there's still parents for these players that want their sons to go and be coached by someone at a big time university that is going to continue to mold them and turn them into the man that they want their son to be. And Mark hey, Pope an is that experience guy. Too, so yeah. Mark Pope, yeah, exactly. Mark Pope's that yeah. guy. I, I wish him a lot of luck again. Like this is, is there going to be like a, a shock like first time around or is he just going to hit the <laughs> ground running? This is one of the, this will be one of the stories to watch. Leading you didn't know 12 months ago that we would interview the future head coach of Kentucky basketball. So right. Appreciate Coach Pope. And, and, and I guarantee you he didn't know that either. Yeah. <laughs> At least good stuff, quickly. guys. Yeah, good stuff. Well, actually, we have Jeff in the comments there asking a question about this here. Uh, do BYU guys flood in the portal? Big fan of Trey Orr, man. Like, yeah, Coach Lee's, we're probably going to get flooded with these. Yeah. Tweets tomorrow on the group chat, right, Jay? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah man. We'll, if not tonight, it'll we'll hear it quick. We'll yeah, we're quick. probably gonna get Rory in there. Jackson Robinson's definitely gonna be in the portal because he was already thinking about hitting the portal. So he won't yeah, see. yeah, and and yeah. I think that we'll start to, because obviously Pope's the kind of guy that I feel like he gave his players a heads up, right? Like when this stuff started to get. Serious. Yeah, he seems like that type of guy. Yeah, seems like the type of guy that would give the players a heads up, like. Or they fail to ask him if this is going on, he'd be like, "Yeah, like this is probably, you know, I'm sure he had yeah, that conversation." Yeah. So the yeah. the players have already started. I guarantee you, putting that, putting out those feelers, tampering, if you will. Not that's not. No, no there's no tampering. There's no, no tampering. tampering. No tampering. No tampering. <laughs> yeah, he uh, seems like a stand up guy. When when he stands up, I'd be like this the whole time. You know, uh, just looking yeah, at him. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> hey. Right now, well, that's actually a perfect segue, right, into our into our portal uh, talks here, guys. Um, portal mania is insane right now. We have we're gonna do ten portal commits right now. We're gonna do five and five. We'll kind of go back and forth on these. Um, but yeah, let's go ahead and start it off here, Mike. I'm, I'm gonna let you take the lead and give our first gentleman player here. Who you got? <laughs> the gentleman and scholar here. Oh, Ooh, tough choice of words. Oh, quick comment here. Crafty, Arkansas will hit the portal considering they have zero players on scholarship. Yeah, I mean, you have two commitments. You have Cohen. Um, we have another guy we'll talk about here in a second. You got some guys that haven't technically hit the portal. So, yeah, yeah we'll hit Arkansas uh, here in just a second. They have to hit the portal. <laughs> um, yeah, you got to build a whole new roster here. So I have eligibility, too. Also. <laughs> get you four minutes out of Jay Heinrich there. It's a TV timeout. Minutes. Two <laughs> Two minute spurts. <laughs> okay, not even I, the full TV. Time I out. guarantee you, I will. I will give you. You'll hit three dimes out of me in, <laughs> in, in a couple of minutes. It'll, it'll happen. But have some shooters around you, man. And uh, speaking of shooters, man, uh, Doug McDaniel here transferring Doug. to Kansas State. The guard from Michigan, 5'11", 175. Sounds like uh, sounds like the small stature point guards that Coach Tang likes. Uh, another solid lead guard. You had Noel a few years ago. Um, last year, Tyler Perry. We kind of talked about it, right? Like maybe not the ceiling season for Perry. Uh, but McDaniel, he had to do a ton of lifting for, for Michigan. There weren't a lot of offensive options, and that was kind of a mess in his whole situation with only playing road games. Hey, that now he's going to go into – That might have been something that they could have fulfilled with Caleb Love. 
Oh yeah, that that, that could have helped. Might have filled a hole in the roster, but <laughs> absolutely. But uh, now he's going to a system where, like they showed, it's tailored for smaller guards. I mean, he's not the defensive presence that Tyler Perry is, but uh, he's going to kind of open up this offense a little more than Perry did last year. It went stagnant a lot of times this year. They were not a very good offense um, when you kind of combined Perry with Cam Carter. Even Kaluma didn't have that ceiling. It didn't it? Uh, didn't match. It just didn't work. Yeah, it just didn't work, man. So uh, Doug McDaniel headed over to uh, OK State, Jay. You got uh, P.J. Haggerty over here at number 16, man. What say you? Yeah, leaving Tulsa and going over to Penny at Memphis. 31 games last year for Tulsa, 21.2 points per game, five and a half boards, and almost two steals Per, what a redshirt freshman year after transferring from TCU. Got all the run he could handle and put up, uh, as as I just spout out, some pretty gaudy numbers. What's the Heinrich line, everybody? Let's do a quick pop quiz. Everybody knows what the Heinrich line is with three-point percentage, right? It's 35. Big I think he was not there. there. <laughs> he was at 29. Need a little bit of work from range there, but even with shooting 29% from three, he still shot 49% from the field. So you love that. And again, uh, going to, uh, you know, this is all AAC, right? Like these are not, this is not some, you know, like just tore up like South Dakota state of the poor or something like that. Like this was in a tough conference. So, uh, good stuff for Haggerty and, um, yeah, man, good get for Penny, for sure. We, we were talking, like, if Penny could just maybe recruit and figure out a way to let his assistants coach, <laughs> maybe, like, <laughs> because the talent's there. Like, what a get for what a get for Penny, man, and Haggerty. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, looks like we got some more comments here. We got from Crafty saying, nope, Cohen to USC. Well, you know, Cohen was going to Arkansas, but now he's following Musselman over to USC. That makes so, sense, yeah. Yeah, it makes, it makes some sense there. And he also is saying uh, Calipari is making some phone calls tonight. Uh, yep. I think everybody's uh, working overtime tonight. But uh, to go back to what you were saying, Jay, I mean, yeah, it's a great get for Penny. I mean, he he's really needs to put something together this next year. And, uh, you know, maybe the next player on the list can help. Mike, uh, who, who you got here? Yeah, we can slide on down. Next one on the list, you had my uh, – we got the whole Arkansas thing, man. You're doing this portal, and it's like, guys, here, there, everywhere. <laughs> um, but check it out, drredo.com. Uh, me and Old HG Hustle got it up to 200 already. I think we're going to be cooking with uh, the 250 by next week. So uh, yeah. working hard, grinding the film, man, getting all the stats out to you. So check that out on drredo.com. That is our top 200 transfer portal big board. Yes, uh, we do have some help coming to Memphis as well in the form of one of Jay's favorites here. Danger! <laughs> this wouldn't do it. It's coming. Set him up. Knock him down. Old Dane Danger here, man. 6'9", 270 seems. Um, the big boy. Yeah, it seems a little light. <laughs> I was going to say that that's a little generous. Yeah. Uh, that's, uh, on, on the low end, I believe. <laughs> when, I don't think Dane Danger would tell you he weighs he's dipping at 270. <laughs> But you, we talk about like me, this all it's the like time. my way to any girl that I meet, you know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Danger. Uh, but you think about danger, like his role just kind of evaporated last year, right? And we saw in the tournament what he could do, right? So it's just really fit kind of what Underwood was wanting to do. Um, you know, playing Coleman over there at the five and kind of Gurrier in that four spot. So uh per minute averages are always insane, like a DFS. <laughs> gold whenever he strikes. Uh, sometimes he's frustrating for us whenever we're you know, talking about the DFS streets. But average six points and 3.6 rebounds in t- basically less than 11 minutes. So he's going to be able to score the ball inside. I think with Penny, you know, seeing what he did with his lineups last year, like he's going to get going to get as much run as he can kind of handle here. Um, he's heading into his fourth year. So uh, with that big run, I would expect some pretty gaudy numbers out of Dane Danger. So a uh, pretty nice start here. Uh, Jay, there's a guy that uh, we had on our top 300 big board last year <laughs> and uh, is back on it again this year. That's college basketball for you. Yeah, no kidding. And and so is a guy looking for his third home in three years. That seems to be more common and more common 
It's Trey White, of course, former Louisville wingman, 6'7", 205. Like the size, long. Like I really like Trey White's game a lot, but uh, I don't like the three teams in three years given. Like I'm, I'm already so <laughs> I'm already over this. Like, and are they gonna? Are we gonna be talking about this again? Because I said it after the college champ, the national championship last year. There's gonna be a lot of disappointed people that don't get their waivers cleared for being a, a two-time transfer, and we saw it. Now. I don't know, Trey. Why don't you one of those people? But yeah, I think you know, everyone's like, clear until they. I mean, everybody can do whatever you want at this point until until we get any type of until we get any kind of. All right, well, it's free agent. Yeah, you can pretty much you, you can tra- maybe transfer you again next year. Well, and, he pro- <laughs> and he probably will. Um, <laughs> but Illinois losing a lot, obviously, with Shannon Damask, uh, Gary, a., like you were saying, graduating, um, and White is versatile. Like he's not just. He's not just going to get up and down and shoot the ball. He can rebound, but he'll, and he'll knock down those open shots as well. So, I mean, when you see the playing time for White, right, like when when the, when the he gets his run, the game gets better. And it's something that you got to think that at Illinois, Mike, if he as he continues to play big minutes in that system, uh, well, we might continue to see that upward trajectory because the upside, like this is a guy that, will probably play a full collegiate career. Yeah. And and by the time we see those upper class, that senior season, like yeah. White is going to be somebody that will, <clears throat> will be making waves. Seriously. Yeah, yeah. I, yeah. Yeah, I don't doubt that either. And kind of weird, right? Like we're almost back to like guys kind of staying in school because of money too. Like no one's no one's really leaving, taking those crazy leaps of faith that you see every now and then. It's like, why the hell is this guy entering the draft? Now there's going to be some always. Um, just different circumstances and things like that. But, uh, yeah, Trey White, definitely an interesting prospect. A couple of interesting years so far for him. But, but this, is, this, this is how – But well, this is just how, like, old curmudgeon I am right now. I'm still thinking about, like, the limited transfers and stuff like that that don't even exist anymore. And this is the thing. We're – it is going to happen, like, every season, right? Like, how many <laughs> are we going to – we're expecting 2,000 2, yeah. into yeah. the portal. And Michael will have all of them written up for you. <laughs> no. no. No, but, like, really, though, like, obviously, I, I'm, I was still in that mindset. But we – I'm not going to go on my transfer rant right now. Who knows, man? It could change. Like – It could, but – I mean, NCAA honestly, tries to do something. Like, is it – it's a fit thing or whatever. Like, yeah, we get it, but – 31 minutes last year he got his I mean I don't, he's a good player I really like his game I just I, again I that's just me on my soapbox about <laughs> you get off that soapbox sir as I'm we off, get to I'm number off. 74 <laughs> Mr. Trayvon Spillers the forward from Appalachian State 67205 committed to Wake Forest played 29 minutes last year nearly 13 points nine rebounds uh, this is a guy and uh, Coach Steve Forbes that loves to find these kind of like, you know, like Kevin Miller last year, Alondis Williams a few years ago, like Jake LaRavia from Indiana State a few years ago. So uh, this kid, first team all Sun Belt, and we talked about how good the Sun Belt was uh, this past year. Um, 62nd in the country in offensive rating. So a very, very impactful offensive player. Uh, and Wake, like, looking at their roster, just kind of what we see, and everything's in flux. Like, we don't know <laughs> what is, exactly these are going to look like for at least, I mean, at least another couple of months completely. Uh, but it looks like they're going to get most of their team back. Like, Kevin Miller's back in the portal. But, uh, you know, man, they could they get Efton Reed back, Cameron Hildred back. Like, these guys could use um, some COVID years. So we'll see. But uh, adding Spillers, man, they didn't really have this type of player. Like, you had Efton Reed who was like, you know, the big center. Now he could shoot a three every now and then, but really a defensive game changer for them. And then you had uh, Carr, who is not much of a defensive game changer. is more of an offensive threat, shooting threes, space on the floor. So for Spillers, like this is a guy that can kind of give you a little bit of everything, right? So uh, definitely something that they were kind of missing last year. They weren't very deep. Uh, so I'm excited about what uh, what potentially Wake Forest uh, could be. It looks like we're getting a comment here uh, for Jeff Gag that says, White mean no store. Was hearing that as well. Yeah, everything that I've kind of been following um, and seeing, I still now Illinois. I mean, they're in, in a good position for Kylan Boswell from Arizona. 
I think there's still, although there's rumors that AJ Storrs out there, you know, maybe looking for a little, a little bit of coin. You know, I heard the, the Kansas rumor about ask for a million. I don't, we don't know how true any of that stuff is, right? Uh, obviously, he's one of the best players in the portal, so he's going to command a, a pretty pretty heavy bag to get him. Uh, do I think Illinois is in the lead? I still I still think they're they're in the lead. Um, but this thing changes quickly. Like you think someone's going one place and the next day it's like a whole different report because of either portal or opportunity or uh, not portal or money or opportunity. It just, it's all, it's all over the place with this stuff. But uh, yeah, Jeff, appreciate you jumping in on that. Uh, you know, Brad Underwood's got some pieces to replace with Shannon, Damask and Gary all gone. So he's got some work to do for sure. That's yeah. Before amazing. we, and before we move on, like I did, I watched a lot of Sunbelt basketball in person this year in San Marcos. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I mm-hmm. saw, I saw Spillers in, when Appalachian State uh, oh, yeah, came, that's to, right. came to town in, in February and uh, he, he almost had a double-double. He basically had a Spillers type of a game. Like, he was just yeah. – yeah. He, he played his game, right? It wasn't good enough. Texas State ended up winning that one, but um, he's an impressive player. And uh, Wake is, is – Wake's getting a good one for sure. Texas State, well, beating up uh... – the old Sun Belt champs there, so <laughs> yeah, there you go. Cool. Well, yeah, I mean that that's a reason why he's in our top seventy-five, and you know, getting these top seventy-five guys is a great start to the off season. I mean, obviously, it's way too early, right? We say that all the time to be looking at rosters, but getting these top seventy-five guys is a great start to the off season uh, for all these teams. And I really like what Memphis has done, uh, what, what Penny's yeah. been doing up there, so. Oh, yeah. uh, looks like we got one other comment coming in. Go Big Blue from Pro Pro Prod Prod uh, Nine yeah. Cool. Thanks for the, <laughs> thanks for the comment. Yeah. Thanks for, comment. Thanks for joining us. Uh, make sure you like and subscribe. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and get that next pack of five commits, starting with a guy. Sitting currently one behind Spiller, Mike. Who is at seventy five? Yeah, that's the that's the big man, Mister Eddie Lampkin, who we're very familiar with from his TCE <laughs> days, and went out in that Colorado team. Man, pretty exciting. Uh, yeah, we are also very familiar with him as the refrigerator from my kitchen. As well. <laughs> Absolutely, Eddie, Eddie Lampkin. Yes. Yes, yeah, right. That's right. Committed to Syracuse and. When I first saw this, I was like, this is kind of random. And I'm thinking about it, and I'm like, it's clear that, like, Coach Autry kind of wants to go a different route than what he had last season. Uh, last season, you know, the kind of the, the weird, like, Malik Brown, Benny Williams. Like, we always talked about it. We just want to target bigs against Syracuse and really any offense against Syracuse. So he's not going to really change anything on the defensive end, but he's going to help. Like, Mintz and Starling right now, I think both will be – Coming back, uh, this is a guy that can give you some punch inside. They had zero punch inside <laughs> last year. So to be able to take some of the weight off of those guys' shoulders, to be able to just, like, dump it down in there, like, go get you 10 points, you know, get you seven rebounds, play 25 minutes. Uh, you know, you're probably going to have to get a four-man that's going <laughs> to be able to play some defense. Um, otherwise, you're looking at a team that you're probably going to need to score a lot more points uh, or at least be able to be a very, very good offense uh, to kind of you know, take out some of these ACC teams at the top. So, uh, yeah, Eddie Lampkin headed over to uh, to Syracuse. And, uh, Jeff, by the way, I wanted to kind of also mention that I don't think it really affects A.J. Storr, uh, the White, because they don't really play the same position. Like, White's going to play a 3-4 position for you where <laughs> A.J. Storr is strictly a 2 <laughs> Uh, he's strictly a shooting guard. So, uh, you know, wanted to throw that in there before I forgot to mention that. Um, <clears throat> so we're uh, we're sliding here, Jay, at number 76. You got Houston Millette, uh, the guard from Pepperdine, man, 6'5", 185. Yeah. Thoughts on him going to the old Bama? Well, listen, I just don't want anybody to think that I was uh, – that's a slight at Eddie Lampkin at all. Uh, because I mean, the man walks into the room and he looks like he's wearing shoulder pads, like he's freaking yeah. Legion, of, Legion of Doom, getting ready to yeah, fight imposing. a tag team match or something like that. And he's like the first guy off the bus is Eddie Lampkin, and and he's a lot more than that too. So, um, really got to uh, really got to appreciate that first time anybody used slight with Lampkin. Yeah, well, hey, you know what? Like maybe like that's we got not gonna say where that comment came from, but yeah. Um, 
Millette obviously uh, committed to Alabama from Pepperdine. Uh, we talked to Coach Romar last year, and he told us that he was excited for this guy. Like, he was a player to watch, and then played him 32 minutes a game, 14 and a half points, three boards, two and a half dimes, shot over 41% from three. Like, he had a good reason, Coach Romar did, to, to be excited. Um, now, he goes to a Nate Oates offense that's losing Aaron Estrada. So, he steps in, excellent shooter, good size for the combo guard. Love the 6'5 frame there. You know, eat, a, eat, a, eat a cheeseburger, you know, get up to, get up to two bills. All right, man? Like, <laughs> Push you're, you're plates. In the, you're in the SEC, okay? Like, let's, let's, hit that, <laughs> let's hit that pasta bar up a little bit, okay? A good player, obviously, and a good get for Bama. So sliding over here, number 118, Makai Mason, a guard from Rice. Talked about him a little bit the other day. He's committed to Washington. 30 minutes a game, 14 points, four boards, nearly three assists. Just under the Heinrich grind at 34%. Uh, this is a revamped roster. Obviously, new coaching. That's what's going to happen. Uh, Danny Sprinkle, absolutely a phenomenal job. You know, Montana State to uh, Utah State, now to Washington. So this guy is absolutely on the rise. He'll be at uh, he'll be with the uh, New York Knicks, I guess, uh, here in a couple of years with his ascent the way that it's going. But uh, <laughs> for Mason, man, like we kind of compared it, like you know, don't sleep on Rice, right? Like they've had some pretty good players. We talked about Quincy Olivari when he transferred over to uh, to Xavier last year as a breakout type player. This guy has offers from all over the country. Makai Mason. I mean, you pop on the film, like, uh, he's got some pretty impressive dunks. So the athleticism is definitely there. Uh, he's entering his third year in college. So uh, this is a great start for, for Coach Sprinkle, but there's still a, a really, really long way to go. So, uh, yeah, Makai Mason, man, sitting here at number 118. Yeah, I mean, Coach Sprinkle, I mean, yeah, he's got a long way to go, but he's already making a splash at his new home. I love mm -hmm. to see it, you know. Maybe pack two commissioner uh, in the future, right? We'll see. <laughs> <laughs> but moving on, Jay, how do you pronounce the next guy's name? <laughs> next player's oh, name? Oh, Chris Essendelko. <laughs> Chris Nobody Essendelko, obviously. <laughs> and, it, it, and although it is Chris, he may He's end up being too. he may end up being Coach English's savior down low. <laughs> He's seven feet tall, and you can't teach. That 8.2 points, 5.7 boards for St. Joe's last year. And even at seven feet tall, ladies and gentlemen, above the Heinrich line from deep, 37% from three. Now, you heard me say those stats. You heard me rattle them off. And you may go, eh, what's, what's, what's the like about this, guys? It's eight, eight points under six boards. No? Okay. Okay. Watch a little tape. Plug it in. Plug in some St. Joe's ball. <laughs> Limited minutes. He was coming off of an injury. And then you go, oh, yeah. There it is. That's the guy. And that's why he's at 123 on the big board right now. And I think he's somebody. Obviously, there's going to be a bunch they hop in. This may be about where he settles in. But he may end up being somebody that we look back on and say, this should have been a top 100 player for yeah. us on our big board with what he's going to do for Coach English and Providence, who, by the way, have already landed Miami guard Bensley Joseph, okay? Yeah. So let's not undersell the job that Coach English has done over there at Providence, the same Coach English that while we were interviewing him, he literally got a text message saying somebody was entering the transfer portal. <laughs> now he's bringing him in from the portal and really bolstering that Friar team, Mike. So, um, yeah. yeah. Esadoko, good player for him. And uh, I yeah, want to know. Go ahead. I want to know why Nate C. Hustle isn't asking me about pronouncing my players' names. Well, like, that's what? what I was gonna say. Like we've like, got a, we've got the we've got a couple of names here. For <laughs> all names. One back, you know, all name game here. <laughs> and I'm kind of glad I got Esadoko. If we're being honest. <laughs> so number one twenty five on the big board is Clark Slatcher. <laughs> Did you uh, that's how you say it. Oh, from Pan, yes, yes, yes. 6 1, 170. He's committed to USC. Uh, pile of minutes, 35 minutes, 18 points per game, 42% from three. Headed over to play for the Muss bus. So we've had a lot of Ivy League transfers the past couple of seasons, guys that can really shoot transfer. And the shooting has, has definitely translated. So 
Uh, that's something that must really didn't have at Arkansas outside of like some streakiness from battle. Mark could suit it a little bit, but really like they just struggled from the three point line. So uh, now with the USC starting over, uh, you know, Slatcher over here joining the, uh, the star center from UMass, Josh Cohen, who was going to Arkansas to be with Musk now going over to USC. It's like, man, they don't even care what parts of the country these schools are at. Um, that's how important the, uh, the coaches are for sure. So, yeah, that'll uh, that'll wrap it up for uh, the uh, the portal commits, oh, and I'm sure we'll have a bunch so. more by the end of the weekend. <laughs> oh, we we'll plenty more by the end of the night. Or yeah. what do you mean? Like they're coming in? Like who knows? <laughs> we actually have uh, Johnny K coming in right now. Chris could be really good. Give him a season in the Big East. We'll see. Johnny, thank you for the comment. Uh, appreciate you coming in there. Make sure you get in there. Like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. We're going to have Transfer Portal Madness. We're going to have content all off season, Coach interviews. We're going to try and get players in here. We're going to do everything we can to give you the best content, best content out there in college basketball. Period. Done. Tell your friends about us. These guys. Uh, thanks for the comments. <laughs> Keep them coming in, guys. Keep them going. Hey, hey, what about what about our guy Ad Fantasy Nav? We could we want to include him in that too. No, <laughs> we, don't nah, have no. we don't have to. I That's our know. guy. Ad Fantasy Nav. He is with us pushing the buttons. Jack of all trades. Always and doing Master of Plenty as well. Don't let him tell Master, you otherwise. Master Eric of all. Master of all. <laughs> Eric the Blue. There you go. <laughs> Catch him on Twitter at Fantasy Nav. Mo oh, Lester please. Jr. coming in. Caligari. Okay. Yeah, okay. Has zero players. Is that a, is that a seafood spot, Caligari? Yeah. Exactly. Well, we have we have the Kalahari Resort in uh, the Austin yeah, area. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. <laughs> yeah Calahari, uh, uh, they Calipari. Have as, is, they have as many uh, basketball players as Calipari does. Also. <laughs> so, um, yeah, exactly. Yeah. Good stuff, yeah, Mo. Exactly. Good to see you. Yeah, appreciate it. Uh, looks like we got some new new people in here, man. It's great. Love seeing it. Thanks for coming in and joining us, everybody. Uh, but we are not done yet. So we had the commits, but now we have new portal entries coming in. Mike, let's start with you. Pretty big name to start our new commits uh, line here. Uh, yeah, so uh, not new commits, but new entrants uh, into the oh, yeah, portal not here. So they're committing to the portal. <laughs> There you go. Yeah, yeah there you go. <laughs> They've committed to going into this portal, and we're going to end up somewhere else. So newly released big board that uh, was actually just refreshed uh, earlier today. So check that out. We dropped we dropped the initial board, uh, I think it was a few days ago, and uh, they'll refresh every few days. Um, getting that list, keeping it going, keeping it fresh. But Omar Ballo, this one uh, a little surprising, but like Jay said earlier, is, it, is anything really a surprise anymore? 13 points, 10 boards, uh, was set to be like a, I mean, already a, kind of a feature player, right? But <laughs> um, this is this is kind of crazy. I mean, one of the best rebounders in college basketball. Like, he does all his work inside, so not much of an outside game there. But do you really need outside game when you're seven foot 260? I think it's in the NBA you do, but not for college basketball. So uh, I think the key for him is going to be taking the, the next step uh, where he can kind of play into the, the 30s and still be a really high-level impact player. Um, you know, I'm not going to compare him to like Josh E, but every time you see like these these bigs that are really productive and kind of a, a limited role, like can we push them? Uh, can we push them up to 30 to 32 where there's the same level of play from when you you start the game, right? I think that's kind of a huge thing for big men in college basketball. It makes them game changers, and we saw, uh, you know, we talked talk, talk about guard play a lot, but uh, and that's what UConn won, right? Was the difference in the guard play in the national championship game, but. The, the two headliners, everybody wanted to see Klingon versus Edie. So the big man alive and well, for sure, in college basketball. Uh, he's obviously going to uh, to be a game changer in whatever conference he lands in. So, yes, welcome to the uh, welcome to the big board, Omar Ballo. Um, I think in the last, like, two weeks, I've had, like, basically a, a, a brand new top ten <laughs> uh, into the transfer portal. And I feel like there's going to be even, even more studs jumping in here uh, sooner than later. So, Jay. Uh, you get the fun one on the list. <laughs> we got there at number 21. <laughs> Damn right. I'm going to get to our guy, uh, Milk Chamberlain. But before I do, I want to clean up the comments a little bit. Uh, our guy Mo is asking me if I'm related to Kirk. Uh, I used to run that gimmick when I was like in college. I, I, I ran with that quite often. Um, I'm not, unfortunately, 
Um, however, I do shoot like Kirk did from deep. And you can ask our guy, uh, Mike, and, and our guy, Eric, about who beat that ass in the free throw contest in the middle of the parking lot at the T-Mobile Arena in Las Vegas last year at the West Regional. This guy, shots for days, Mo. Um, but, yeah, uh, I'm not. we're not related, but I used to run with that gimmick a lot. So we appreciate you hopping <laughs> In there and then and then saying that uh <laughs> Andy Leonard just over here. Dead. Yeah, yeah. I basketball is dead, but well, Mike Woodson anxiety. coming back, uh I mean, yeah, yes. well okay. Jeff asking what's up in Arizona. What is up in Arizona, man? Right. Like I mean I think Tommy Lloyd just um, you know <laughs> maybe want to try something. I don't know, man. Like it's it's it, I don't even think it's really anything up in Arizona, Jeff. It's just the nature of college basketball. Like, these guys want to get paid, right? Like, I don't think Omar Ballo is going to be this, like, you know, long-term NBA. He's got the body to get in there, maybe be a backup center or whatever for, uh, you know, a few years or whatever. But why not try to get uh, – why not try to get, the you know, some of this paper? I, I told Nate C. Hustle the other day, I said, why not? Why, why doesn't everyone just get into the play? As long as you have an assurance that you can come back to your team – Get in. Why wouldn't you go out there and test at least see what's out yeah, there? I mean, it's throw your hat in the ring. Like, <laughs> never know what you're going to get offered, man. So I think it's more of that, Jeff, than it is. Um, I, I, I would have a hard time thinking that 2,000 guys are completely unhappy in their situation. I think they're just looking for maybe a little more money or opportunity. So it's, it's one of the two, and sometimes both. No doubt about it. You know what I do have a little bit of doubt about is Mo saying that he could take me in an NBA three point line contest. I, you know, I, I don't, I don't judge a book by its cover, Mo. But I just want to let you know, like I have range, like walk in the gym range, <laughs> like walk into the like on the block range within the vicinity of the gymnasium. So we'd, it'd be a good one, I bet, Mo. I, I bet it'd be a good one if we if we did that. And yeah, I, I do get to talk about our guy Robbie Rob Milk Chamberlain. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Larry Blurred, Steph Blurry. That's right. Everyone's darling of March. And we were robbed of seeing them in March Madness and instead got a play-in game where a team didn't even bother <laughs> showing up. Yes. And instead we had, to, we had to force ourselves to watch the freaking NIT just to see this team, just to see Indiana State play. Um, I think in Mike, he's probably going to follow coach to St. Louis, right? Like that's sort of the, the feel here. Um, we all know the story from Indiana state this year. He was the face of that program and he's a sophomore. He might look like he's 37, but he's a sophomore or at least he was this year. Um, yeah. He's not going to blow you away with the athleticism. So insert like YMCA game joke here <laughs> yes. because Love that's that. what he does. Like it's, this is the guy with the rec specs, that's 57 years old at the YMCA <laughs> that just pivots and it, it sets shot three pointers. And I mean, I've been shooting, shooting set shot threes my whole life. So I mean, I'm, I like, have, uh, you're, the re you're the reason why Robbie Avila. <laughs> yeah. That's yeah. me. Like that's, that's me and Mo don't get it twisted just because it's a set shot. Don't mean I won't drain it from three. Okay. I'm just letting you know, I'm just letting you know, but, uh, but yeah, um, somebody's going to get a good one and he may not, you know, I don't, I kind of agree with, with Mo here. Like, I don't know if St. Louis is a crap program, but I, NIL I, money's I, better there. It's a well, major, major TV sets there. You took, you took the, Sorry. Took the words right out of my mouth. So <laughs> you're, exactly, you're exactly right. You're exactly right. Like he can go anywhere he wants. And if the money is good and you know, you like the coach and you're going to be able to produce He'll be a star there again. Yeah, uh, he'll be a star anywhere. Uh, he's he's just a likable cat. Like people, mm. people flock to those stories. And uh, yeah, so St. Louis or not, somebody's going to go on. Yeah, I mean, I mean, who doesn't love a guy with goggles who that can hoop, right? And and exactly, he gives he gives guys like Jay uh, <laughs> delusions of grandeur where he can beat a guy like Mo in uh, the three point shot. <laughs> That's easy now. Exactly. Love <laughs> hey, Mo, Mo's asking about it. Mo's asking about the, the NIL at St. Louis. Like, find out a Big Ten or something. Like, ah, the coach. I mean, it. I've, he'll be able to make money there, though, right? Yeah, like, we're gonna make like, money in St. Louis. Yeah, like it's yeah, not, it's, I, it's a big I, TV I market. I understand yeah. the point. 
I understand the point, Mo. Like, it's not one that you think of when you're thinking like, oh, let me rake in the NIL bucks. Yeah. But again, like that, the TV market stuff matters. And if you're out there doing commercials for um, Magma Bong <laughs> Chevrolet or whatever out there in St. Louis, then you're going to have a lot of eyes on you. And that creates a lot of opportunities. And you'll make a lot of I mean, money because those commercials are out for, you know, such a If he doesn't get a whipped cream audience. commercial, I'd be so angry. <laughs> yeah. And you know, also, it's not like he's in a, I mean, like, yeah, St. Louis, like we don't, we don't talk about, they're in the A-10. Like this isn't. Yeah. This isn't like this is a two bid league, you know. Basically, every year before last year, so I mean, it's not like this completely out of the realm where you're getting bigger, a bigger TV audience in St. Louis, right? You got an MLB team there. Um, yeah, I, I, I think it's a smart move. I, well, I don't know, it's a, first pitch at Cardinals game in no time. <laughs> Avila Mount, so Rick Mount's jumper saying Avila would body ball. <laughs> <laughs> Who doesn't want to see that? Oh, Who doesn't want to see that? If you say you don't want to see that, you're lying. Oh my goodness, that is it. amazing. I love it. I love it. Uh, I'd love to see those two meaty men slapping meat. That'd be awesome. Oh my goodness, sir, this show's going off the walls. We're almost done. Really? We're almost done, audience. We're almost done. We're almost done. <laughs> we're not done yet because we got to talk about three more guys. So number twenty-two, Tremont Mark. We're very familiar with this game. Transferred from Houston last year to Arkansas. Now Arkansas to wherever. And after that, maybe wherever. And then, but we only really care right now in this moment about next year. And he played thirty-two minutes for the Must Bus. Sixteen points, four rebounds, thirty-six percent from three. Had a really hot start to the season. Kind of faded down the stretch. You know, obviously, with Must out the door, it makes sense for basically this entire roster to jump into the portal. Uh, but one of the better offensive wings in the portal, uh, great mid-range game, can make some threes, obviously. So uh, very excited about uh, Tremont Mark and uh, where he could potentially end up, Jay. Uh, number 33, man, is uh, kind of – I mean, I'm, I guess I'm not surprised. I don't know if I'm surprised anymore about anything, like I said. So there he is. Who's that? Well, yeah, Mark Mitchell, obviously. Um, one of the more intriguing stories of the college basketball season, just in terms of, like – not, I don't want to say he didn't meet, I mean, he didn't meet expectations in terms of what was set for him. And that bar was just so high, obviously, but with, with Filipowski and all the guards, like Mitchell just couldn't get into a rhythm ever. Like it just was never his time for any, like you'd have one game, right. Where it's like, Oh damn, that's Mark Mitchell. That's the guy. And then it's like, we just disappeared for a little while. Um, but you see the flashes, right. Former five-star, um, he was good as a sophomore. He wasn't great, but he was good, solid, even. You know, 11 and a half points, six boards. And is he ever going to be a number one option? Um, I don't know. I don't think so. Probably not. I'm just talking to myself that way right <laughs> now, actually. Um, but you know, this guy's a number two guy, right? Like, easily, easily. Get him in the right situation as the number two and let him work. Let him cook. <laughs> let him cook. Let him cook. <laughs> let him. Man, that, that chat's cooking. Yeah, it sure is. Otherwise, you go to IU and be a savior and make a million. I'm not buying the St. Louis NIL. That city is in bad shape. Okay. McCaffrey. I'm buying Grand St. Louis NIL. Fred McCaffrey would give his left nut to get <laughs> Oh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. man. I mean, yeah. St. Louis is the number oh, 21 man. designated market in the United States. <laughs> so, like, yeah, there's a lot of eyes out there. I know, I get it. It's, yeah, it's, it's St. Louis. I understand. I, I, that, that point is well taken. I, I, like, no, no doubt about it. It's St. Louis. But again, 810 school in a top 20 TV market, like, it's something they to consider. And maybe he doesn't want to go to Indiana and be the guy because I don't think it's his. Like, do you want him to be like, he's the face of your, he was the face of that program. But like, if you go to power five, like, do you want him to be the guy? Like, I don't, yeah, think I don't know. I think that's a little, guy. yeah, it's a little much for him to be a number one option on a power. Five. I don't know if we say that, but it's just uh, tough. Cause there's just so much more athleticism than he's probably used to seeing it. You know, I mean, NBC though, 10th best conference in the country last year. So this is not a huge step up, but yeah, I think it would be a huge step up going somewhere like the ACC and you know Big Twelve. Oh God, yeah. imagine the <laughs> the wear and tear on that guy in the Big Twelve. No, 
I cannot. Yeah. I cannot. One more guy here, Mike, right? Yeah. Jump in. Uh, number 69, Trey Davis, uh, Seton Hall, forward. Uh, man, we should have seen them. We talked about Indiana State. We should have seen Seton Hall. <laughs> uh, but Big East, I guess, only getting three teams in from now on. I don't know. Um, I guess the national champion. <laughs> uh, but really, like, you look at his year, and, you know, there's Kadari Richmond on that team. Dre Davis kind of became the number two option. I know Alamir Dawes is there, but really you look at it like he was their second best player, 15 points, six boards, 35% from three. Like he was awesome, especially down the stretch here at the end of the year. Um, they beat UConn, the, you know, they beat Marquette. Like disappointed they didn't get to see him in, uh, in the big one, but uh, I mean, a lot of suitors for him here at number 69, uh, you know, inside outside game. Nice. He played against a tough, a tough Big East front court. So, uh, yeah, that's our uh, that's our five new entrants into the Entrance. portal, which I'm sure we'll be talking about later on. Well, I mean, I say later on. Maybe in like next week, we'll be talking about where they're going. <laughs> it won't be long. It won't be long. These guys aren't staying. I mean, they all want to get recruited again. They all want to get wine and dine, and and they will. But I bet a bunch of them know already. And we'll know very quick. And some of them want to put up their top 75 on their Twitter page or whatever. And, like, some of them want to go through that whole process again. Some of them want to get to ball and to cash and to campus. And I think we're going to see that a lot more often than the top 72 uh, invites uh, on the, you know, on my – this is my top 72 uh, recruiters here. All right. Uh, (laughs) Cutting it down to number – Cutting it down to 58 on Tuesday. It's like, God dang it, just pick <laughs> yeah. a damn team. Like, this yeah, is exactly. not, I get, you know, who, who knows? Who knows? But <laughs> I've cut my list down to 37 teams. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Like, okay. <laughs> yeah, I was, yeah, I was yeah. talking about that the other day with you guys in the, in the group chat. Just like, man, these guys are just like putting out their wish lists and cutting it down from hundreds of teams. It's crazy. <laughs> yeah. it does, Why man. not? Why not? I mean, like you were, like hey. you were talking about earlier, there's no penalty. Just go in and do it and see what happens. I mean, who knows? They're, the, they're the, the piece of cake, and everybody wants a piece, right? <laughs> live, chat on, live chat is on fire. Amazing. Live Keep it coming, guys. Fire. Keep the comments coming, everybody. We appreciate seeing y'all in there for sure. No doubt about Absolutely, it. Always guys. good to see everybody. Drop a fire emoji in there, too, while you're at it. Drop those cool. fire emojis. Thank you to everybody. Keeping the chat hot. Some OG chatters in there. Jeff Gagner, Snake's Eyes. Johnny K, plus a couple of new faces in there. Crafty, Broad, 1994, Mo Lesser, Rick Mounts, Jumper, and Peter Jocks, Jockstrap. Love seeing these new <laughs> folks chopping it up in here. They're blowing up that chat, loving it. Make sure you hit those like and subscribe buttons uh, so you don't miss any of the content we're pushing. College basketball does not sleep around here. We will be no, it does not. probably back. Uh, we'll probably be back on Sunday with some more offseason info. I mean, like we were saying, this transfer portal is going crazy. Changes day by day. Me and Mike are working on this uh, transfer big board, and every day we are updating it. <laughs> um, Mike was surprised. Like cookies. Today, but, you know. <laughs> it's like cookies, man. It's like a fresh batch every day. <laughs> I love it. Yeah. I love it. It's yeah, amazing. absolutely. Well, thanks, guys. Um, man, it's still still going. I, man, it's hard I need to keep this up season this to start, start tomorrow. <laughs> Yeah, same Rick's mouse, jump, Rick mouse jumper. Yeah, no doubt. Johnny K saying Kirk Reese the Johnny's by Sunday. That's your boy. There's no way Kirk Reese and Rick Patino can exist. <laughs> There's zero chance that could co- can coexist. I love it. it would last a minute and a half. <laughs> Appreciate it, Great. guys. Awesome. Well, until next time. Well, I can't really say let's get this spread, but let's get this info, man. Let's do it anyway. <laughs> let's do it anyway. Get the spread. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by the office. Get your fantasy prescription by subscribing to the channel and checking out drrodo.com. And until the next visit, be well and take care.